This is the Cessna 337 Super Skymaster, one of the most unique aircraft in aviation history. Renowned for its unique centerline thrust twin-engine configuration and push-pull configuration, it stands out in the general aviation sector for its distinctive engineering and performance characteristics. The aircraft's engine setup, involving one engine in the nose and another in the rear fuselage, eliminates the conventional issues related to asymmetric thrust that are common in traditional twin-engine aircraft. An innovative design makes the 337 particularly appealing to aviation enthusiasts and pilots who appreciate the combination of safety and performance. Introduced in 1963, it was a substantial upgrade over the 336. The most noticeable change was the switch to retractable landing gear, which improved the aircraft's aerodynamics and performance. The 337 initially came with two Continental IO360A engines, each producing 210 horsepower. But over the years, the aircraft underwent several modifications, leading to various models with improved avionics, more powerful engines, and increased comfort and performance, such as the 337G introduced in the 1970s. Throughout its production run, the Skymaster was well received for its unique engine configuration, which provided enhanced safety. The centerline thrust design minimized the yawing moment in the event of an engine out scenario, making the aircraft easier to control than traditional twin engine aircraft. But is this design brilliant or was it just a flop? Stay with us till the end of the video because here is everything you need to know about the Cessna 337 Super Skymaster. Stepping inside, the cabin width and height. At about 3 feet 10 inches or 1.17 meters and 3 feet 8 inches or 1.12 meters respectively. Provide a comfortable space for 4 to 6 occupants, including the pilot. Ideal for both leisure and business travel. Accessibility to the cabin is via a single forward hinge door on the co-pilot side, which is sufficiently wide and tall to allow for easy entry and exit. The ingress and egress are straightforward, thanks to the low wing design that necessitates minimal climbing. The seating arrangement is noteworthy. Typically configured to accommodate four to six occupants, the seating is arranged in a club seating style, which is quite popular among passengers for the ease of communication and comfort it affords. The seats themselves are crafted with ergonomic considerations, offering decent lumbar support and cushioning, which is quite adequate for the aircraft's intended use in general aviation. The upholstery, often in leather or high-grade fabric, adds to the cabin's overall appeal, resonating with the aircraft's vintage aura. Visibility is another highlight. The aircraft's high wing design ensures unobstructed views from the windows, which are generously sized for an aircraft of this category. This feature not only enhances the flying experience by offering spectacular views, but also aids in situational awareness for both pilots and passengers. In terms of cabin amenities, the Super Skymaster, keeping in line with its era of design, offers a basic but functional setup. The aircraft typically features standard lighting, ventilation systems, and rudimentary climate control capabilities. But modern refurbishments often see these aspects upgraded with contemporary technologies like LED lighting and improved air conditioning systems, enhancing passenger comfort significantly. The soundproofing in the cabin is adequate, though it's worth noting that the unique rear engine configuration can contribute to a different acoustic experience compared to conventional single or twin engine aircraft. Owners and operators often invest in additional soundproofing measures to mitigate engine noise, making the cabin quieter and more comfortable for conversation and in-flight relaxation. The windows play a significant role in the cabin experience. They are relatively large and well-placed, offering passengers expansive views of the sky and landscape below, which not only enhances the enjoyment of the flight but also helps in reducing the feeling of claustrophobia that can sometimes occur in smaller aircraft.
And finally, the Super Skymaster offers a modest baggage area, accessible externally, with a capacity suitable for light travel needs. It's not overly generous, but aligns well with the aircraft's general aviation role, accommodating bags and equipment for weekend trips or short business jaunts. Now let's step into the cockpit. The instrument panel in its original configuration is a classic representation of 1970s-era avionics and typically features an array of analog gauges and dials that provide the pilot with essential flight information. The panel layout is straightforward, with flight instruments arranged in the traditional six-pack configuration, which includes the airspeed indicator, attitude indicator, altimeter, turn coordinator, heading indicator, and vertical speed indicator. The center console houses the throttle, propeller, and mixture controls for both engines, arranged side by side, which is intuitive for throttle management, and the overhead panel typically contains switchgear for lighting, engine starters, and other ancillary systems. The engine instrumentation in the Super Skymaster is notably more complex than in single-engine aircraft due to its dual-engine configuration. The instrument panel includes separate gauges for each engine's RPM, manifold pressure, cylinder head temperature, and exhaust gas temperature, along with standard fuel, oil pressure, and temperature gauges. This setup demands a more meticulous monitoring process, befitting pilots who relish in detailed engine management. In terms of avionics, original factory models of the Super Skymaster came equipped with what was then standard basic communication and navigation radios, such as VOR receivers and basic GPS units. However, many Super Skymasters have been retrofitted with modern avionics, transforming the cockpit into a state-of-the-art control center. A popular upgrade is the inclusion of a Garmin G600 or G500 flight display system, which integrates primary flight information, including attitude, airspeed, and altitude, along with synthetic vision technology, providing a three-dimensional depiction of terrain, obstacles, and traffic. Another common retrofit is the addition of a Garmin GTN650 or 750 GPS slash nav slash comm system, an all-in-one unit that not only serves as a GPS navigation tool, but also integrates radio communication and VOR less navigation capabilities. For engine monitoring, the JPI EDM 700 or 800 series engine monitors are often installed. These digital systems provide comprehensive engine data including cylinder head temperatures, exhaust gas temperatures, fuel flow, and other critical engine parameters. Autopilot systems are also a common addition, with the S-Tech System 55 or 60 being popular choices. These autopilots offer features like altitude hold, vertical speed control, and GPS steering, greatly reducing pilot workload during en route phases of flight. The integration of modern avionics in the Super Skymaster's cockpit not only enhances the flying experience, but also significantly increases situational awareness and safety. Features like traffic information systems, terrain awareness and warning systems, and satellite weather data bring a level of information and decision-making capability that was unimaginable when the aircraft was first introduced. Now, let's talk about the engine performance specifications, and how it flies. The Cessna 337 Super Skymaster is powered by two Continental IO360 engines with a TBO of about 1,800 hours, each producing 210 horsepower. These six-cylinder, fuel-injected engines are known for their reliability and efficiency. The aircraft requires 1,550 feet or 450 meters of runway to take off at sea level on a standard day with a full fuel payload of 1,100 pounds or 500 kilograms. The engines allow a maximum rate of climb per minute of 1,200 feet or 365 meters and a maximum cruising altitude of 19,500 feet or 5,950 meters. The plane has a maximum speed of 180 knots, a maximum cruise speed of 160 knots, 
with an average hourly fuel burn of about 20 gallons or 75 liters. The maximum fuel capacity is 92 gallons or 350 liters and 128 gallons or 480 liters with auxiliary tanks resulting in a maximum endurance of about five hours. And finally, the aircraft has a maximum range of about 930 nautical miles, which is 1,070 miles or 1,722 kilometers, and a minimum landing distance of 1,650 feet or 500 meters. Now, let's talk about the price and cost. The base purchase price for a new Cessna 337 Super Skymaster was about $50,000 before options back when it was launched, but today prices for a pre-owned model range between $100,000 and $350,000, and while the annual fixed cost is estimated at $20,000 to $30,000, the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $200 to $300. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.